Alrighty, traders. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening, and welcome to the uh, welcome to the session today. As you can see right here, I do have uh, my guests in the house. I've got uh, Tyson. I've got uh, uh, I forgot your name eventually. Uh, 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 Chris. I got Chris. I got Tyson here. Uh, we're going to be talking about the markets. A lot to chat about. Obviously, the coronavirus is still a factor at the moment right now, but we don't. We are starting to see some recovery. Due to the fact that the uh, stimulus packages have, have have been approved by the Senate, and so we are seeing some some positive reaction in the stock market, specifically a uh, Tokyo market. I'm really watching the Tokyo market very very closely because uh, I've got a lot of currency pairs that are affected by the Tokyo market. And so as the Tokyo market starts seeing some recovery, I'm starting to see some recovery in the New Zealand dollar, in Aussie dollar, and of course don't forget about US oil. US oil has hit a flat, hit a bottom, and around about uh, between 21 and 23 dollars a barrel and it's just sitting there we're going to talk about that today as well so without further ado um remember make sure that you go ahead and post your questions in the chat we definitely the panel definitely wants to go ahead and address those questions but we're going to talk about a lot of things today we're going to go ahead and throw things out there have a conversation around what's going around at the moment right now in the world and how it is going to affect your trading so with that being said, my name is Gary Fricker, Director of Trading here at Market Traders. And I do have my, my first guest right here is going to be, uh, let's go ahead and see what we have here. Uh, we've got uh, Chris up at the top. Chris, uh, good, uh, good day. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing well, Gary. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everybody. How are we doing today? Happy Thursday. <laughs> yeah, Thursday. We're forgetting the days, too, with all the quarantine taking place. Uh, Tyson, how are you doing? Uh, how's the quarantine going with you? Uh, it's going good. It's going good. I got a uh, public announcement here. If, if you see me touching my face or I'm in my house, wash my hands. I know people are getting beat up like, oh, this guy was on TV and he touched his face and he coughed. And <laughs> listen, I'm in my own house and I can cough all I want. So, yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's actually uh, I, I didn't realize, uh, you know, I, I, I work from from home and I broadcast from home and I do everything from the home. So I'm pretty used to this type of and, and I know all of our instructors do the same thing. And so we're pretty used to this, but the one thing that's really, really um, taking place now in the last couple of weeks is I'm getting the honey to-do list done. It's like uh, I'm, I'm working through the honey to-do list like so quickly because no more can I say, well, I'm going to just go and play some golf or hang out with the guys, you know, go to the pub or whatever it is. Now it's like, forget it. That's not happening. Now you've got to go ahead and do all the jobs around the house, right? So that's yep. getting done. Yep. Well, I, the thing with, real quick on that is I've got a big list also. Um, but I also say, hey, I'm, I'm going to get to it. I got plenty of time. We'll get to it. You know, I mean, no, no rush. You know, so kind of gives us time to get to or it. Or you right? can just fill your schedule with trading. I'm that's just true. up at every hour of the night just to trade. So that's my that's my my quarantine. I'm in front of my yeah computer. yeah. And talking about trading, man, let's get into the uh, trading right now. And if you take a look at the uh, charts, uh, we can see that. We've got a big rally in pound today, uh, and yeah. they did have the uh, the rate decision today, and they kept the rates unchanged, 0.1 percent. And uh, uh, there was a little change in the verbiage uh, in in obviously the policy statement. Uh, but what is your views on Tyson? What are your views on the pound uh, at the moment right now on the rally? Are you watching any pound pairs? Uh, I am actually, yeah. I uh, I was on a webinar with Chris last night, uh, talking about a long. Well, uh, if you uh, if you lost us a, a few minutes ago, uh, we're back online again. Um, there's been a lot of uh, slowdown in the internet and a lot of issues, and so uh, we did get disconnected. We're back online again, uh, and we're gonna go back into the conversation we had about uh, uh, the pound crosses. And and Tyson, you were saying about the pound crosses. You and Chris had a conversation around that. Yeah, we did. We, I was on a webinar last night with Chris, and uh, um, I was really happy to see that uh, his right trader, Max, was kind of confirming the exact – it was still in the sell zone, but it was confirming the area where I wanted to start to get long. It was a breakout level where I wanted to start to buy. And yeah. so what was nice is uh, we broke above those levels. I think we've got a fairly clean shot. It's There's going to be waves, so trading in strategies like right trader, Max, and different things like that to ride the waves is going to be key. But I think sure. got a pretty clean shot up to that 128 level. And, I mean, you think with the volatility, I mean, that's, what, 600, 700 pips away still? So there's a lot of money to be made. Right, right, yeah. right. And, and, and by the way, guys, I'm, I'm going to try and avoid us from jumping back and forth between the charts and that just because uh, with the slowdown in the Internet, everything seems to be uh, creating some issues around that. I'm going to try and avoid uh, having a bit of a, a breakdown again. So 
Uh, we may just go into just conversation rather than going into yeah. the actual chart itself. So with that being said, what I do uh, suggest that you do is when we talk about a currency pair, if, if uh, Tyson says, hey, I'm talking about the pound, uh, Aussie dollar, go to the daily time frame because we're really going to be talking about the daily outlook and what that looks like. And then we may go into saying, hey, there might be some opportunities on that lower time frame. But overall, we'll be talking about the, the, the overall direction on those currency pairs. Um, so to so, say that real fast, let me just uh, so if students are looking or if you want to pull up that daily chart uh, for whoever's watching, you can see that that's kind of that breakdown level of that last area of support, that 127.50 to 128 level. We had that kind of big capitulation, uh, you know, hot butter, hot knife through butter type of move. That's most likely where we're going back up to test. And that could be kind of a, actually, here's an idea, Chris. Right trader max up to that level, perfect storm range right in that level. Ooh, that sounds fancy. Uh, like it's, that. It, yeah, so we, we talked about that last night on the uh, the, the seven o'clock and that space. So you had a you had 197 pit breakout today. And yeah. with right trader max, I looked at the one hour, which was right above that buy zone. Uh, the 30 minute, the 15 minute, the five minute, all were valid uh, buy trades today. And it was, it was just, it was a slow morning. I was up with the uh, flex trader room this morning at 3 a.m. We traded for a couple of hours and uh, the pound pairs just really didn't provide a breakout. Even the rate decision was kind of priced in, not really a lot of jumps on that news. Uh, but the big news today, I think why the pound dollar got the big jump and the pound has taken some strength is the big news today was over 3 million jobless claims for the U.S. Uh, it was it was way more, way more than what was expected. I mean, you you had touched on that also in the webinar that, you know, I think back in 2008, they predicted like 650K or or, or actually had the print of 650,000 job, uh, jobs lost. Um, and now we looked at a forecast coming into this morning that was 1.6 million and it came in at like 3 million. So way above uh, what was expected. And yet somehow the market's up three and a half, four percent today because the federal auto stimulus package and it's been voted on by the Senate. It's going to be voted on the House tomorrow. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not a believer that we're out of the woods yet. I think that, uh, you know, this is a nice, healthy recovery and this is a little bit of balance for the market. Uh, but the reality is, you know, seeing this thing drop 30 to 35 percent in a straight line. Now we're coming back up. I mean, we're, we're right around that. We're right around 30 to we're creeping up to that 38 percent retracement. So for traders yep. that love Fibonacci's, it's, it's working out really well if you're watching those technicals. Yeah, yep. and, and I want to make sure, Gary, Chris, I want to make sure that we spend plenty of time on this. This is really important. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the jobless claims uh, today were were ridiculous. I don't think anybody expected, you know, what was it, 3 point, what was it, 3 point? 3 point 3, I thought. Let me let me double check. Yep. Yep. Um, here's the one thing that, that I want to – everybody to yeah. kind of know what I'm paying attention to real fast when it comes to that. I, I'm looking at, so the jobless claims uh, reset at zero every week, right? So that now we know that number. We know that number. So next week it's, we'll get another jobless claims. Those are new people filing for un unemployment. What matters though is the continuous claims and the continuous claims. Um, there's a couple places out there. You can find good data on that, but the continuous claims a little harder to find. The all-time high is like 6.8 million. We rolled into this week with 1.8 million already on employment. Continuous claims, adding on the 3.6 or whatever million, we're at 5.1 million. Mm -hmm. Next week, we're going to shatter the all-time record, going back like 50 years. Wow. Yeah. wow. It's, so, so here's what I'm looking for. Here's how every recession starts and then stops. So we're in a recession from my, my standpoint. But what I want to see is I want to see the continuous claims top out and start to trend down. Once that right. starts to trend down, that will show some legs in the economy. Um, I think we're yep. months away from that because I think we've just gotten started with this. But um, continuous claims um, is what I'm paying attention to. Yeah, yeah. Now, let's talk, just talk about what's going on right now with regards to the stimulus package, right? Is that just a short-term solution just to be able to get everyone settled and make everyone feel like, uh, things are uh, being supported by the, uh, the by the government, and, and that they they definitely want to go ahead and keep things moving for, forward. Um, and then also the reality of you know shutting down a country, uh, shutting down a country for two weeks for three weeks um, isn't good for any any country or business, right? I mean, it's definitely going to take some toll. Um, how, how do you guys see this shutdown if it's going to happen here in the U.S. A shutdown. How do you see it's going to affect the markets, number one? Number two, uh, with the stimulus package that they incorporated into, into the mix as well, how's that going to help the economy? And are we going to bounce back quick 
uh, if we resolve the, uh, the, or at least reduce the, uh, the, the cases in coronavirus right now? Well, I'll, I'll start. Um, number one, I don't think this ends well at all. Um, you know, with an election year, with the pressure, with I think the the unexpected free fall that the market was in, I think we created a monster with the 12-year expansion. You know, we got into that 11th year, that 12th year. We had bearish sentiment from smart money. We had no participation and very little volume for the last year, year and a half in the stock markets. This coronavirus rolled into the technicals that needed to happen with the fear and uncertainty that kind of caught the markets and the whole world by storm. So here we are, you know, shutting down the country. We've, we, we're we seeing China now get back to normal after two months of, of strict quarantines. If you look at any of these charts that are tracking the coronavirus, the one thing that's staggering right now is China had essentially a two-month window where they shut everything down. It was a really strict quarantine. Uh, Singapore did the same thing. South Korea did the same thing. Those are the only countries that you can see with with high case counts and that were, were really risky there for a while that have plateaued. The U.S. Right. is still on a straight trajectory up. Uh, Italy, Spain, most Germany, all of those are just going straight up. We have not seen any plateaus, and cases will likely continue to climb. Now, on the same side, you know, I think that there's there's no positive news that's coming right now out of coronavirus, and I think that's that was weighing on the markets, which is why the Fed stepped up, and that's where we saw this government intervention. Central banks are slashing rates. It was emergency measures. I get it. I think this is a this is a band aid on the deeper underlying problem. So I don't think this ends well, but what it's creating right now is it's at least creating a sense of support and, and kind of a safety net for the markets. Um, but, you know, I, I read kind of an interest in opinion poll, which is, you know, what's more important? Is, is the, the stock market more important or is the health of the nation or the health of the globe more important? I mean, I think that we're, we're kind of using the, the short sightedness of saving the stock market to make it look like our economy is fine. When in reality, I mean, look, People can get sick from this. It, this isn't done. These cases are going to continue to climb. So I think sure. it's a really, really tricky, uh, tricky spot that we're in because it's like we wanted. I mean, you're, you're hearing Trump talking about jumpstarting the economy and doing it against doctors' wishes to get this thing back on track and get everybody back to work and you know life returns to normal. And Tyson, you mentioned something early this week when we talked, you know, offline about the Spanish flu. It's like. We, we, we get started too early. It's like we might suspend it for three to six months and things. Everything, everything is back to normal, but it creeps up and something worse. Ha there you go. See, Tyson's got it. <laughs> no, but I, just, I just think that this doesn't end well, and I don't think that this is the right way to step in. Like we just have a lot of manipulation now. We have a lot of intervention in the markets, and it's almost like, hey, the stock market's in trouble. Come on, Fed, what do you got for us? And it's like injection, 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 and that's happened. For a while that's happened for a while now it's like this isn't 2008 yep. you know this is a brand new monster that uh that the markets have created and uh, i think these boom and bust cycles are going to be more and more frequent i wouldn't be surprised if we have more flash crashes this year it's like it could be you know and, and i'm not saying this to scare any traders if anything all this means is if that vic stays above 50 stays around 50 to 60 we're going to see volatility every day in the markets volatility and right. movement is absolutely what you need so don't think for a second that we can't trade this. If anything, this is the best time to be sticking to your rules and sticking to your processes and find some strategies at work and get in there and grind out some pips. Because if you're forced to stay home, you might as well learn how to trade and do it. Right, right. And and, and on that subject, when you say, uh, and I'm actually just looking as you were talking, I was looking at the uh, different stocks and, and VIX and see what the price is trading at right now. And um, and we don't, we have dipped down. And, and and we we have seen the uh, stock market showing some uh, some positive, and yes, this could be based on the stimulus that's taking place at the moment right now. But that could be just a short term excitement, but it doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be a long term solution. Um, the biggest problem around what's happening right here in the U.S. is I think we need to contain. I think we need to have a strict rule. Go, let's go all the way and say lockdown. Period. Uh, this this just uh, hey work at home isn't enough. We're just going to say lockdown. Let's contain this completely. And unless we do that, we're going to continue to see uh, the new cases increasing and it's creating a problem. But coming back to what you said about this is not going to end well for, for us. Uh, in, what, what exactly are we talking about right here from a market perspective? So we look at that. If we look at the, uh, the dollar index right now, dollar index had huge rallies. Obviously, when, when uh, stocks are crashing, everyone is moving into cash. We knew that the, the money was flowing into dollar safe haven, and uh, we started seeing this huge rally. 
Now we're seeing a very strong correction taking place now on dollar index. Question here is for you, Tyson. Do you think this dollar index correction right here, based on what uh, uh, Chris was saying, this is not going to end well? Is this just a small term correction uh, and we're going to continue to start pushing back up north? Or are we going to go into a little bit of deeper territory on, on maybe further stock, ra stock rallies and less uh, movement on the, uh, the dollar itself? So, uh, great question. Um, I think we're following the path of uh, 2008. 2008, um, when things started to really fall apart, uh, mid-2008, the dollar got wildly strong, like super, super strong. Spiked up. Um, in fact, went from, uh, if I'm looking at the dollar index on Smart Trader right now, went from like 9,600 to, you know, uh, almost 12,000 at the, at the peak, like within, um, within five, six months. Just huge spike. Right. And, and then and then what happened was um, we weren't done falling. The markets didn't find a floor in, in the stock markets until March 2009. So the dollar pe peaked or had a near a peak in November 2008. It had another kind of rise up, but that was like right around the near peak. About five, six months before the markets actually ended up putting in their lows. So what I think is happening here is this. I think we're going to have um, – uh, big big spurts. I, th I don't think that the, the the bullish rallies are done necessarily. I think we're near a top that's going to be sold off, probably fairly aggressively, but I don't think that we're near a, a bottom in the stock market yet. So um, I think longer term, I, I like the retracement side on the dollar. Real long term, I'm a, I'm a dollar bull. Real right. long term, I'm a dollar bull. But but I uh, over the course of the next, I'd say year and a half. I think we're going to be lower than we are today, but I think we're going to stay in this real volatile range, and I think we're going to be lower than we are today in, in the next year and a half. However, I don't think the stock market is even anywhere near being done falling. I'll give you a reason why. I agree with you, Gary. The only way we've proven to contain this is to shut the economy down. Stock market right now, I could argue, is trading at what would be kind of one of the best case scenario price to earnings ratios, it's fair valued at about 15, 16 times right now. And that's a best case scenario of earning about $170 for the S&P 500. There's zero chance we earn $170 for the S&P 500 because we're shutting the entire U.S. economy, worldwide economy down. I actually think that it's going to be closer to $120, $110 per share, if even. I mean, I don't even I don't even know how, how do you even calculate what the proje projected earnings per share is going to be considering right. – there's my wife. <laughs> hey, what's up? Hey, listen, yeah, work at home, man. This has happened. Kids are going to run behind you. Things are going to happen. Anyway. <laughs> hey, tell us she's at least going to have a give us a wave there, man. Home, right? Um, <laughs> but, uh, no, I, you know, I think I, – I don't know where the earnings are going to be, but I think that forecasting at least a 75% of what the projection was going to be is fair, and I think it could be worse than that. And, and that puts the S&P 500 at a valuation of – Right around the 2000 level. Um, and I think that, honestly, every day that goes by, every week that goes by that we're shutting our houses, I think a 75% cut is a rosy outlook. I think that could be a 60%. I think it could be a 50%. I think it could be. So um, my point is this. I think the dollar is is going to be poised for some overall medium-term weakness. Um, I think – I don't necessarily know if we put in the absolute top. I think we're near a top. Um However, I'm going to continue to find ways to try to buy yen because I believe the yen and Swiss are going to continue to be strong for the next year. Right. And I just pulled up my uh, behind me right here. Uh, not many people can see this right here, but I just pulled on the screen behind me so we can actually see some sort of – I don't want to move, the, uh, move around too much because of uh, uh, very slow internet at the moment right now that's creating an issue. But uh, if I take a look and see uh, what's going on right here behind me, uh, this is the uh, dollar index, and so uh, I'm going to move uh, my uh, studio around a little bit right here. So, and, and, and I suppose everyone can see, but not see as much. But if you can see a little bit right here, this is the uh, trend that we we seen here on the dollar uh, on the dollar index, and this is the correction. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, so quite a bit right here, so you can see the actual pullback. This is the pullback that we see right here. Quite a strong pullback, coming back to another level of support right here. And that support's coming off, uh, looks like uh, coming off uh, a major high right here. Here's the uh, major high right there. And that high was back in 2000, looks like 17, maybe late 2016. So 
Um, so we're coming back to retest that. And if we trade back below that, um, could, we, could we be heading to the bottom of the trend line? Um, could that I happen? Think so. I think so, and I think that's kind of the range. I think right now, Gary, I think what we're doing is that, that capitulation rally up, and I think we're going to come back down and test that. That's going to be the range, I think, probably for the next few months. And, uh, and and I think we'll kind of bump at the towards the top and the bottom of that range. Ultimately, I think we'll probably, even with the stock market coming down, I think we'll probably come down and, and retest this, you know, 11,006, 11,700 level, ultimately. Yeah. Uh, but I don't yep. see it happening right away. Again, I see volatility continuing. So let's go to... Opportunity. Let's go to the pound, uh, the one that's been moving quite a bit uh, this uh, this morning. Um, this is a pound uh, a US dollar right here, and I'm going to draw up um, just just you know compress the charts quite a bit there. You can see how uh, we've hit this strong level of support. This was a Brexit low down here, um, and but we've hidden this strong support down here. Price has traded below, but it's come back up again. So if you look at the dollar index, the pound dollar. Do you think that the pound dollar could be an opportunity for traders to start thinking about buying it back up and are we going to sit in this range or and, and if we talk about range uh we're probably going to be looking at price moving up to around about uh, let's see if i got a yep there it is there price moving up to around about 136 and we're trading at 121 at the moment right now so we're looking at about a 1500 pip opportunity for price to move back up to the tops right here because there's not a lot holding it. There's temporary resistance here, but the major resistance is up here at about 136. Yeah, I, I agreed. I think, Chris, um, that, that was kind of the idea of the, the trade that we were talking about last night on the webinar. Yeah. Okay. Tyson, I, I'm looking at it right now, and I'm literally thinking I need to get the right Trader Max robot ready to rock and roll. Like once we broke out above that 2,000 mark, I mean, we're 200 pips above that today. I think uh, I've got a nice looking deployment on the on the 30 minute chart as far as getting some entries. Um, I, I just took another look at that daily and how clean that weekly bounce has been. I mean, coming back to that, uh, you know, Brexit low back in what was that September? Uh, yeah, October was that flash crash low in pound pairs in 2000 yep. and uh, 16. Yep, 2016. So we came back to that and to see it go. I mean, granted, it went 200 pips lower. So. Sure. Did it? It went lower, but the fact of the matter is, you look at a daily and weekly chart, and you see how mons like how massive that rejection is. The weekly chart looks fantastic to that 27, 2800 uh, level, which Tyson's talking about. So I like this right. move, and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do some serious, uh, some serious contemplating on what time frame I want to trade because I think this looks great for some waves to the upside to take this up towards. And, and again, what I, what I like about right now, like weakness in the dollar, what I think. Uh, we will see is with this short-term weakness or this near-term weakness for the next maybe three to six months on the dollar, I think the dollar would be a great candidate for a pre-summer push with weakness. You know, another kind of aggressive trending cycle over the next couple of months, if the dollar is that weaker currency pair, that weaker basket, expect pairs to be moving fairly aggressively. I think the pound dollar covers a lot of ground and not a lot of time. I think the euro dollar comes back and covers a lot of ground. Uh, the Aussie dollar comes back. The New Zealand dollar comes back. The dollar CADs have been coming back. So all these yep. great pairs against the dollar... Uh, I think technically it's like the dollar weaker means more volatility and we're probably going to see some faster moves. Um, and at the end of this, it's funny how we're looking at this you know, crazy run up and this crazy run down and the euro dollar did the same thing. I think that it just it, it's exhausting for the market to have that much movement and that little amount of time. And so it just creates I, I, I always call it kind of like the tuning fork where it's like you have this big wave. And the market has to find a way to calm itself down. So, like the waves of the market will just slowly calm. Now, I would love to see you know big up, big down, big up again, and then we come crashing back down to balance the whole move. And I really think that can happen. But as Gary showed in his chart, that channel is is perfect structure to look for. But the good thing is, a little close lower on the dollar means we have a lot of downside potential just to hit range levels, not even to give us trends, but within that larger structure, there is certainly trends on the smaller time frame. So I'm I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at 30 minute charts to get that right trader max running between 30 and one minute or 30 minute and one hour charts. Uh, I think it's time to take some trades on that. I think it looks great. Real so quick, I've if you gone... remember, uh, real quick, Gary, if if you remember, Chris, the the breakout buy uh, that we were calling was at 1971. Yep. Um, what I what's what's brilliant about that? I'm in the trade right now, and I actually want to lock in profits right here, mm -hmm. and I want to start looking to rebuy back at that 1971 level, 1971, because I think that's where we're going to retest. But sure. again, the easier way to do it is just ha take your profits, turn on the, the the something like Right Trader Automation, and just let the automation just rock and roll, 
and do what I call I call harvesting an income, right? It's just riding those yeah. waves and just kind of being being a little passive about it, but then watching that robot kind of generate the income for you, which is always really cool. Absolutely. And, and taking uh, what we saw on that daily time frame, taking that strong support at one twenty uh, one or one tw uh, let's call it one two hundred. Uh, so at that level there. We had the 1.2 level. We had a strong support there. Prices traded back above that, which means it was resistance, then now becoming support again. Now, with that being said, if we take a look at the actual move, and Chris, you mentioned a very important thing, waves, right? The, how the marks are waving up. And, and, and so timing is important, right? And if we take a look at the way the market is structured right here, I went ahead and then put in a, um, a, a level from here to here giving me uh, my uh, my first AB boundary here. And I always look at the 1.618 extension when we look at wave structure. And so this becomes my wave one. This retracement down here, wave two, the 1.618 is priced at around about 122.44. Don't quote me exactly, but yeah. let's call it 122.50. So 122.50 right here, and I see it's duplicating there. I don't know how that's happening, but 122.50 is uh, the, the, the number that we're looking at. Now, 122.50 would mean that price is going to hit temporary resistance there. And when it hits temporary resistance, it's going to come back down again and then start going back up again. Here, around about 1.19, uh, let's call it 25, 1.1925 right here, this is support now for the market. So if you don't get in, if you're waiting for the market to go ahead and correct, like Tyson says, Waiting for that correction, right, Tyson? Waiting for the correction, then looking to trade it when it goes back up again. We may get a little bit of a resistance coming out to around about 122.50, hit resistance. Then we see a slight, well, let's call it a short term pullback, and then another move up towards uh, uh, another level up here, which looks like about 126. Um, could so be the Gary, next upside move. How about this? And, and Chris, I want your guys' opinion on this. I like locking in long profits right here. Buying back at 1970, put my stop below today's low, targeting 2250. Getting back out, getting back in around that 1930, 1920 level that Gary was talking about, and then riding it back up. And that's the big trade that's going to take us to, to right around that 28 level. So get out now, buy back 1970, go up to 2250, get out again, buy back again around 1920, 1950, and ride it up to 1920 uh, or uh, that 28 or so. As now, we're talking, fellas, I'm getting my right Trader Max robot set up right now. I love it. And, and, and uh, what uh, what time frame are you going to deploy it on? One hour, fifteen minutes. I like the I like the thirty minute, honestly, Gary. I'm going to do an aggressive thirty minute deployment using a four hour stop, and I'm just going to monitor those four hour levels so I can give it some distance and let it catch up and let that one hour chart officially get into the buy zone. So I'm going to use a, a higher time for my for my stop area, but I want to make sure that I'm getting filled on those thirty minute uh, thirty minute ribbons. Yeah, and I think that could be. Uh, well, this is, a, this is the deal. For those that don't know what uh, Chris is talking about, Right Trader Max, Right Trader Max is exactly what I have open right here. It's a, uh, a trading uh, trading strategy we use. Both Chris and I both use it. We're, we're very passionate about the strategy. And I know Tyson is on board on this one as well. And uh, what we're doing here is we're looking for opportunity for uh, these blue and red ribbons to confirm our trading opportunity. Now, if I'm looking at a one hour time frame, we just about got a confirmation here to go ahead and start getting in on a buy. Now, do I want to get in the buy when the market's coming up to resistance? Probably not. So what, uh, what Chris is doing is saying, hey, I'm going to go ahead and flip it down to a, which I like to call a gear down strategy, going down to a 13 minute time frame. now looking for the re-opportunity, which means that he's not going to look for the first signal. He's now going to look for the reconfirmation of that signal, which means that price is going to come down and re -go, go back up again. I'm actually going to go to the chart. Uh, let me flip it over right here. This is the 30 minute right here. So this is the 30 minute chart right here. So what Chris is going to wait for is for price to move below the blue ribbon. And then once it moves below the blue ribbon, turn around and start heading back up north again and getting on a buy if the trading continues to go bullish. So that's his game plan right here. And obviously you look at the large time frame to find where the market's in, what environment, support resistance, do we are we testing it, are we not testing it? Um, and he'll make his decisions on that. Is that uh, pretty much on par with uh, what your plan, plan is, Chris? That is that is exactly right. Uh, I, I pressed the play button, so now it's just waiting for the price to pull back. Give me that confirmation. So I want to see that transition of color. In this case, we're looking for red to blue. Give me the trade. That should be those buy and dips, buy and dips. I set it up so it's going to be a two-to-one reward to risk, and I'm going to turn it all off around 2750
So, so Tyson, you're looking quick. at 28, 2750. I like to turn it all off and take profit. So Perfect. question on, on that. Um, and this is, I know the answer to this, but I just want to make sure everybody understands this. When Chris says I push play, we have a long-term directional bias. We have a target. We're going after six, 700 pips higher. And when you say I push play on it now, it's just basically trust and verify, right? I mean, your job. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's, yep. Uh, it's yep. Just monitor. I mean, I, I'll, I'll check my charts. I'll check my phone. I'll watch. I'll see if I'm in. But it's just, I know the logic. The market moves in waves. The market uses these ribbons for support. We're looking to see if that buy zone stays valid. If it doesn't, I'll take a small loss. If it does, I'll make big wins. I mean, that's that's the plan. And, and just to go ahead and to throw a curveball in the whole mix of this, just so that everyone knows, time frames have different support and resistance. I'm going to go to the daily time frame right here. Now, using the same, and let me see if I can hide all the technical analysis right here. Using the same sort of technical analysis, take a look at the, uh, the, the same system and same tools we use, the indicators. Notice that price has not reached any of the blue or red channels right here. And uh, Chris, you've got a good philosophy on, on exactly what to look for when, when price is starting to move to these, uh, these ribbons, right? And as we move into these ribbons, you can see that our blue ribbon right here is, is indicating 124 to be a resistance. The next ribbon is 125.86. And then our red ribbon is trading at around about, I'll have to pull up the, this right here, is trading at around about um, 127.37. So a good target when you trade the lower time frames is if you're trading against the overall direction on the daily, and I'm just using these indicators as the overall direction. If the overall direction on the indicators are saying they were bearish, but you're trading bullish because you've looked at the bigger picture and you found that there's strong support at one, uh, 1.2 then going down to lower time frame and trading that bullish is going to trade against the overall trend based on where the indicators are but it doesn't necessarily mean that's where the market is going to go right it doesn't necessarily mean market is going to go south uh, because there is a bigger picture and the bigger picture is the strong support at 112 or uh, sorry one uh, uh, one two so at the one two level we buy in long but look at these levels on the large time frame look at those levels that uh, that using the same trading system or same rules right except now you're using this as a indication where price could go to and where you could find your next resistance levels before make a decision whether or not it's time to cash out and and so i i do that chris i don't know if that's something that you apply in your trading as well but i definitely will look at the larger time frame and use that as an indication and say i need to be watching these levels and the good thing about this is when we do trade above these levels when i trade below these uh, uh these higher time frame resistance levels then it's almost like a, another confirmation that hey listen here if that's the case then we can just go back to that larger time frame and say hey we're going up to 136 right here you know break through that resistance when the daily time frame converts from being bearish now to being bullish and we've got the one and we've got the 30 minute time frame that we're constantly buying long now we're just going to continue to trade long all the way up to 136. love it yeah, I, yep. it's already uh, it's already posted. Flex Trading Room, Right Trader Max, posted in Telegram. I'm in, man. I'm looking forward Listen to it. Let's see, Tyson. Let's find let's find Chris another trade. You pulled up this one right here. Find <laughs> well, Chris another trade. I was just gonna say. I was just gonna say all of the dollar pairs. I'm long the Aussie doll. All the dollar pairs are structured very very similar right now. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw another one out there, and that is going to be uh, let's look at um, Aussie Canadian. And the reason why I'm going to go to Aussie Canadian because not only is Aussie being affected by the Tokyo market and the coronavirus and all that good stuff, but of course we've got the Canadian dollar that's affected by U.S. oil. What is your two cents on this? I'm going to give it to you, at Chris. Chris, what, maybe you can oh, maybe you can find a trade for um, for Tyson here. Okay. Let me go what ahead and just flip at? over the what, What's our pair again, Gary? Sorry. Aussie uh, Canadian. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it up. Sorry, I'm I'm doing this all backwards right here, but yeah, you know it's, but it's here interesting. We go. All right. Um, yeah, Aussie CAD. So I'm I'm just taking a look at my chart right now. Aussie CAD. Uh, it's funny. Uh, after this, you know, massive run the last couple of weeks, and the Aussie just got smoked there for two or three weeks, um, along with other risk risk you know on type pairs like the New Zealand and the CAD. Uh, you know, I actually had pending orders on the Aussie CAD around 8,000, and we just missed it with that giant kind of flashy move towards 80.50. Um, I think right now the Aussie's kind of in recovery mode. Uh, we also have, I'm, I'm sure, Gary, you're a big channel man, so I'm sure you have a nice channel showing support. 
I think right now the Aussie Cat is long going up to that channel resistance around 89. I think 9,000 is a really solid resistance level. But 9,000 and 9,100, you know, that's key resistance. Now, we had support in 2013. We had support in 2015. We had support in 2018. And that support has recently broken. So I think we're channel bound right now because that's a currency pair that doesn't typically trend, but yeah. it, it rather finds a lot of efficiency. So I think we're we're bullish towards channel resistance, but we're most likely going to maintain that resistance and, and maintain this kind of overall down channel. My thoughts. So, so question: Do you have right trader deployed bullish right now on Aussie CAD? No, it doesn't move fast enough for me to, to trade it right now. All right, Not so, that that matters. That doesn't matter for Right Trader Max, but I don't have it deployed right now, Gary. What currency pair doesn't move right now with all the volatility you're having right yeah, now? Yeah, that's true. Well, the, I mean, <laughs> hey, look, listen, yeah. My, my Right Trader Max is super active. I mean, I, I had it running on like eight currency pairs this morning. I turned it off. We had it on DollarCAD last night. Uh, it's It's got plenty of action. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, but Aussie CAD just hasn't been on my radar. I, I took some profit on it earlier. New Zealand CAD, I took profit on it earlier. So Aussie Cat, I haven't uh, really, really uh, watched it much, but I love that currency pair. So I love right. this too, real fast. And not only do I love everything that Chris said, um, I agree 100%. But if you go into like a four-hour time frame, we are we are forming a really nice structural kind of bottom formation. I mean, this is how bottoms are formed. Yep. Um, after big flushes out, get snapback rallies, kind of base around that um, uh, that that bottoming area, and then we start to reverse. We're putting in kind of structural. Higher highs, higher lows. Um, I think now is the time. I don't. I don't think you can go wrong with deploying something like Ray Trader Max on this, or just looking for ways to get long um, up into those levels that Chris was talking about. Okay, and, and so here is a, a four-hour time frame right here. I've got it open over here, and on the four-hour, I've noticed that uh, we do have a nice little channel taking place right here. I was actually watching it on the. Uh, let me go ahead and kill all the. Uh, drawings on here and here's the four hour right here i'm going to go ahead and uh, pull my and by the way i do apologize i'm not actually set up to to do this here on the chart now i have a rule here this is the four hour right now and if you look at the four hour and i'm zooming a little bit closer everyone can see this off my screen i uh, hopefully it's clear enough to can you see that on my screen yep okay well, on the four hour right here, we've got uh, price testing uh, the backside of this upward channel right here. But this upward channel could just be, and look, there is an indecision candle right there. And it's also come off, take a look right here. This is what is a little bit concerning, right? Is that price has gone ahead and tested uh, this level right here, which I'm going to go ahead and mark it off. Uh, this right here, which just like I said earlier on, when the market comes back on the high time frames and tests these channel, uh, these ribbons, the blue and red ribbon, we have resistance and we have support. And so we've got the 200 EMA and we've got the red ribbon right here pushing price down. The question that I have is, is this just a temporary breach of maybe an adjusted trend line? Which means that the trend line is going to be adjusted to the next level, which is going to be something like this. Are we going to adjust this trend line? And is, it, is this going to be our next move going up? Is this going to be our, just go ahead and create a channel line right here. Is this going to be our next move going up right here? So so that's always the question right here. So uh, that's are we what I would up? say because if you go draw a trend line from the high back in March on March 10th. Yeah. Um, and, and you draw a trend line from there, you can see we've come back, we've broken through, we've come back down and now retested that trend line, which would support now we're forming that upside channel um okay so we've gone so we've go gone the, below go it the, go to the high on march 19th from march 9th to march uh, 19th or so you can see kind of we're forming that upside channel we've broke that trend line we've kind of retested it and uh, yeah we do have some areas we need to get through for sure um but the thing I like is that we are putting in pretty strong structural higher highs, higher lows. I think it's pretty fair to place a stop below that March 23rd, March 22nd swing low. And, right. and just let this thing go up to those levels uh, Chris was talking about. Yeah. And yeah. also on, on that note for Aussie Cad, now that we're on the subject, I took a closer look at it. The four-hour chart, the one-hour chart has some really nice looking pockets too that get me up towards, at least in the short term, if we jump around tomorrow around like 8600, 8620. Yep. So right, right in that yep. zone. 
Yeah. Yep. Just some so let me go stuff. back to uh, the daily right here, um, and we take a look over here at the daily. This is uh, uh, this is something that I picked up right here. Um, we had, and I'm going to go all the way back here. We got a low right here. This low is at what price that? That is the monthly low of June 2010. So we're trading below the monthly low of 2010. I don't know if you can see it if I brought it back here. There it is there. We're trading just below that uh, monthly low of 2010. This is June 2010. If we take a look at where price is at the moment right now, price is trading just below it. It tried to zoom in a little bit closer up here. We tried to break above that. It came back and closed out with a, a bearish engulfing. Uh, actually, not engulfing, uh, a dark cloud cover. So it came back, closed out with a dark cloud, a cloud cover. That is a bearish candlestick formation. This is my concern. So we hit that resistance, came back with a bearish, uh, 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 bearish uh, dark cloud cover, and it is at resistance. And so this could be seen as just a retest of that bearish candlestick formation. And then a continual move to the downside. And maybe the continual move to the downside may only come back to retest the bottom of the trend line again. So I, I am bullish currently right now on Aussie CAD. All right. But I'm very much watching that 85.82 level. So 0 0.8582. If we trade above that and it takes out this bearish, uh, bearish candlestick right here, we're on our way up to the, to the top right here. All right. We're heading to New York. Forget about coronavirus for there. We're heading to New York on this trade. And so this is the deal right here. 8,700 is going to be the level of resistance I'm going to see on this chart. But we have to break above 85,82. And there was a trade in my trading room said, man, this Aussie CAD is moving very slow. That's because it's really trying to compete against this resistance right here and trying to break through it. And, and if we see U.S. oil starting to strengthen, question Chris and Tyson, are we going to see Aussie CAD then move very because stronger CAD, stronger U.S. oil? push down south because we're hitting bottoms on U.S. oil right now. Yeah, logic would say yes. Um, yeah, I, I think that I'm going back to those levels that I talked about. Like if you look at a weekly or monthly chart, it's been a long, long, long time since we broke. The, I mean, we had five or six year channels on the Aussie CAD and last year we broke those lows. So yes. I would put everything angled and favored towards the downside. But this pair is one of my favorites for efficiency, for pivots. Uh, I'll make a note. I mean, Gary, you're 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 the target trader. Uh, we have a mm -hmm. 9180 yearly pivot for 2020. We have one all the way up to 9650 back last year that never got hit either. So there's a lot of upside potential with targets okay. above and balances above. Um, but given the structure, it's like that whole channel that you have drawn in your chart has to break before I get really bullish on it. So I think right so now think we play the play the structure. I think I have the answer. Go go put on uh, right trader max on a one hour time frame, and I think this will solve all our problems. Because I agree with everything you're saying. We could we could go back down and test those lows, right? Or we could be breaking out. How about this? Just let the strategy make the decision. Yeah. How about that? Then then it's you know what? If if we then it gets our because I can get emotionally attached to this trade. I can say, oh man, I've been beaten up so much on it. I got to stick with it. Or and I could talk myself into a trade. Or I can do this. And as you just saw, I'm bullish. And and I think I'm bullish right now. And Gary just made a great point of like, well, wait a minute. We have some reasons. We might be going down, maybe retesting, maybe not break through those lows, but maybe retest them again. So maybe I could be wrong because Gary's a phenomenal trader. So how could both of us kind of be right at the same time? Just depend on a strategy to make the decisions for us. That's that's the best way to do it. Right. You hit it on the nail, uh, Tyson. Hit it on the nail because that takes all the emotions out there because yep. – if you're going to deploy right trader max on just buying only and it goes ahead and it finds that resistance at 8582 it doesn't break it and it hits out south the system is not going to trade it because it's now showing very signals and not yeah. bullish signals and so what you may want to do is buy until 8582 and then actually go ahead and convert that into a sell from 8582 start looking to sell and if price continues to move through 8582 then go ahead and say, oops, plans have changed. Let's go ahead and close out. And with a confirmed break of that level, close out uh, or at least uh, reverse your, your system from selling only now to buying only again and buy above that level. So that'll be your pivotal point. Trade until that point, wait or sell only. If it breaks that point, then buy only uh, above that level and, and continue to do that. Yep. All right, cool. All right, guys. Um, what other current pair we uh, we got to go ahead before we uh, we shut down today? Uh, throw another pair out there. 
Tyson, Chris, throw a number. I actually, I saw a couple of, uh, of questions that popped up. Somebody was asking about gold. Uh, gold has had kind of a similar run that the dollars had. There's been a ton of volatility in gold. We had, you know, kind of divergent highs up towards 1700. We crashed all the way down to the yearly pivot at 1450. Um, I'm curious what your thoughts are, you know, both you guys on, on gold. I think that uh, I was willing to buy gold. Uh, at 1365, 1370, that 1450 was a pivot. I just didn't get the level that I wanted to buy it from. Um, I like gold long for now, but I'm not now. Like it, it, it's over and done with. I, I think that uh, we might have some range bound trading in gold just so we're going to have possibly range bound trading in the dollar. Uh, I just think it's kind of a big shakeout in gold right now. But that's what came up earlier. I saw that in the uh, in one of the questions. So I just wanted to address that before we uh, for a wrap up for the day. I think that gold has you know this this roller coaster ride like the dollars had. And the stock market still needs to find some footing. And the stock market's going to revisit the lows. You're going to deal with some short-term volatility. And there may not be you know, clear direction necessarily on gold. So I'd like to see gold settle back in towards those lows. You know, If we can get to 1365, it'd be a long-term bull on gold. That, that'd be I don't point. like to trade gold. I, uh, I'm a gold uh, fan in inflationary environments. And I think mm -hmm. we're decades away from inflationary environments. Yeah. That's just me. So I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm a fan of uh, digital gold. I'm a fan of Bitcoin. So. Right. Um, that too. I, I, I'm not bullish on gold. I just, I'm just not. Okay. So I'm going to throw it out there, Chris, and say from a technical perspective, we looked at this uh, uh, a few weeks ago when gold was on its rally, and we identified that for gold was actually in an upward trend, uh, be it a midterm upward trend. We also identified that uh, we had a wave structure in place, a larger wave structure in place. You can see here on the left hand side here, this was a wave one structure move. So we had a wave one, oops, and I've gone ahead and moved that up. That's cool. Uh, this was our wave one structure move right here. So we had a wave one structure move, price moved back down to a wave two. We had a bit of range bound trading, but then eventually ex extended south to wave three, which is our 1.618. It pulled back. We had then another extension, and that extension went all the way up to 1. Point, uh, well, 1,674. All right. So 1,674 hit that level. We had a lot of uh, uh, a lot of people talking about it going up to 1.8. Um, 1,800. Based on the technicals, based on this trend line upward move, that was the level of re retracement, uh, or sorry, extension. That was the highest point of extension, around about one, uh, one call it 160, uh, sorry, 116.75. Um, sorry, did I say 116? I mean, uh, 16.75. So we're looking at 1,675 to be that resistance. Now, price. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit more. I believe, uh, I believe that. We've gone back to test the wave four lows. I think we can go back and test it one more time because it hasn't really got to the, the, the upper tra channel line. And we haven't taken out the lows at 1,446. Uh, 14, uh, and, and so we've still got some action to the downside. So I somewhat agree with uh, Tyson there and think that goals maybe hit a retracement point And we're going to see maybe it uh, come back down to around about 1,430. 30 and then i'm thinking still bullish i wouldn't be surprised if gold doesn't go through an oil type of move in the next five years to the downside yep yeah interesting I yeah mean, i'm not gonna call it i don't know but i just i don't see a world where i have to go dig my gold out of my backyard anytime soon maybe i mean maybe we're here i guess but i don't see it <laughs> maybe it's the well, cure for that, coronavirus you know, could be, could be. <laughs> well, they do say that silver and gold, actually silver outperforms gold in recession and even it's depression, it's right? It's because silver is useful. Gold has very limited use case. Yeah. Correct, yes. But gold seems to uh, gold seems to rally and it seems to be stronger against silver, or at least uh, it has a stronger rally than silver has when we're heading towards some sort of recession or depression. And, and so this is what we've pr pretty much seen right here. There's been a lot of talk a few months ago, you know, before even the coronavirus kicked in, we saw there was a lot of talk about uh, avoiding recession. That's why the Fed jumped in and started cutting rates early, uh, well, towards the later, later part of the last year. They started cutting rates after they were raising rates, they started cutting rates. And then obviously uh, the coronavirus hit. And we did see, by the way, we did see gold start to rally. See the 2019, so the whole of most of 2019, we saw gold rally. And then as we got to the, uh, the midpoint right there, we started seeing some dipping in, in gold. But, uh, um, but
But so what you just said is really interesting. You just said that historically silver in the midst of the recession outperforms. Coming into the recession, gold outperforms. So gold's outperformed substantially. Do a pair yeah. trade, long silver, short gold. Now you're kind of hedged, and ultimately, historically, you should actually have a really nice trade that could pay pay dividends. I like that trade. Co correct, yeah. And, and so when Stock is the next moon go, phase? Stock traders could go long SLV, short GLD. So when is the next moon phase? Uh, April 1st, I believe it is. Is that a joke? <laughs> we'll no, see. Hey, stay tuned. I bet I've been hearing some amazing things about it. Yeah, I have too, and I believe that uh, like the 24th, uh, 24th of uh, uh, March, we actually had a full moon, which indicated a possible re uh, reversal in trend in the market, and uh, this took place just a few days ago, which means that if you go ahead and take a look at most of the currency pairs, we actually did see some significant news in a lot of the crosses, so uh, well, I'm sort of become a believer in that. Well, there's actually some truth behind it because of gravitational pull, and it does affect emotion. If it, The markets are made up by human emotion, and yes. moon phases do have an effect on human emotion. And so there is some caveat to it, to be honest. And there's actually patterns that can be tracked. Absolutely. So. Hey, guys, let's see our final thoughts before we close off the session today. Final thoughts from uh, – I'm going to go ahead and give it over to Chris and then to Tyson. Final thoughts to you guys. Sure. Uh, final thoughts for me today. Um, you know, there there is not a better time to be in the markets. Uh, I have completely changed my schedule to be in front of the markets at what I think to be the best times day to day. Uh, my trading room is active. Uh, right Trader Max is out and hot and fresh, and it's been and I mean it's it's a tried and true system that is. Not, I mean, look at it. It's like I I am so excited to use it as much as I can because I know that number one, I don't want to be in front of my computer all the time. And so I know that it's picking up trades for me. Um, I just have to figure out what I'm comfortable with time frame wise, figure out what I'm comfortable with stop loss wise and risk. And that's it. Like you're, you're placing the trade, you plan the trade and trade your plan. It's as simple as that, but it's a great time to be in the markets and it's a great time to be learning. If you're not doing anything else with your spare time, if it's your honey do list, if it's your other stuff, if you're again, learn how to trade, learn how to be active, learn how to participate. And uh, you can do a lot of good for yourself. Because if anything, we're walking away from this, whether we find the bottoms now or find the bottoms later, we're going to have a recession. I think this is going to be some of the most decade worth bargains that we could ever have. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at myself and I mean, Gary Tyson, anybody right now that if you have the next five or 10 years to be an investor, you're looking at some of the best possible opportunities that you'll ever have. So I, I take that with, you know, we might be able to think of this as kind of a negative time and a dark and gloomy time, but give it time and, and give yourself some time uh it's going to be amazing what we see in the future sure tyson yeah i, I agree 100 percent um i i think it goes back to the word i think i've said this word more than any word over the last few weeks which is opportunity um it's uh it's it, there's opportunity everywhere the volatility is amazing um, I'm doing some bargain hunting right now in my long-term portfolios for some stocks that are just uh, sitting at crazy, ridiculous, great valuations right now. Um, I think they might get cheaper, but you know what? The cheaper they get, the guess what? I'll, I'll continue to add to them. Um, on an intraday level, uh, the one thing that I, I know has been working really, really well uh, for, for Chris and Gary um, that I'm going to start adopting more is being kind of agnostic to trend, right? Agnostic to like, oh, I'm so stuck in this long-term trend. And just take what the market's given us. And the best way to do that is to to have a way to say, um, like, for example, that Aussie cat could go down to the lows, could break out to the highs. But let's be agnostic to it and let's have a strategy that we can trust, push play on, and just let the strategy do the work. Um, sure. And that's what's working the best right now is knowing that there's opportunities but not being so, so focused on thinking we have the exact right answers. Just let the market – um, kind of come to us and make sure that we're able to push the buttons when those opportunities happen. That's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Sure. And I appreciate you guys' thoughts on that. And I'm going to challenge you on this. Next week, we're going to do another trio between three of us. And I want you to guys to bring to the table some stock trading ideas. Let's bring some stock trading ideas. We'll look at the currencies. We'll take, take a look and see what's going on. But let's talk about uh, maybe throwing some cryptos there as well. Cryptos, I know Tice is going to be excited about that. And what's also stocks, let's bring up some stock picks that we think are probably good. Because I'm currently right now also looking at stocks that really hit bottoms. Uh, and, and is it time to go ahead and to start throwing something at it? You know, just throw something at it. Don't commit everything into it. But throw something at it. And if it drops a little lower, go ahead and throw some more. 
But if I look at, like, for instance, just an example of uh, uh, cruises, traveling, right? All these uh, stocks in tra within travel, um, uh, and one, one particular is the Royal Caribbean. I'm a, I love cruising. I love going on the, on, on, on the, uh, the boat and the ships and cruising out there in the different places. And I've seen that there was a 85% uh, drop in that stock, uh, Royal Caribbean. 85% drop. And if price moves back up to the levels, which it should over time, that's like a 300% return. Just this last week, we've already had 140% growth on the, uh, the actual portfolio. So, or at least the stock, which means that you put in some money, you're making 140% in a week. That is incredible. So there's still opportunities out there and we just need to look for it. So let's go ahead and make sure that next week, uh, Chris and Tyson, we come to the table with some great opportunities, not just on currencies, cryptos, and of course stock, but we talk about everything in total. And so quick also, teaser, I have, a st I have a stock I'll bring next week that has a very high probability of about a 65% return within the next six months. Well, there we go. Next there week. we go. Getting Tyson already itchy. Tyson is already uh -huh. itchy to talk about this. Tyson, just all right, tell me yeah, My to final thought is, guys, listen here. Uh, even through all the chaos that's happened over the last couple of weeks, uh, currency, the currency market is still moving and making it, making good trading opportunity, or trade, uh, good trading opportunities. So the thing is this. Um, one thing that is always going to be my number one rule is making sure that you got good equity management through all your trades. My second rule is don't forget rule number one. All right, always have good equity management in your trades. And if you can apply that, these little uh, situations that you go through right now will be just slight bumps in the road as you continue your path to success. My name is, uh, my name is Gary Fickhardt, and this is Tyson and uh, Chris. I'm keeping forgetting your name. This is Tyson and Chris. And uh, days, we'll Gary. see you guys next week. Thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. See you, everybody.